89 FM, the cultural vibe. And we got some special guests in the building uh, coming to the mic from the light-headed crew is my man Brill. Othello's also in the building, but we're going to get to him a little bit later. What's good, Brill? What up, what up? So, uh, man, it's been a it's been a great uh, year for you so far. Now, we just uh, saw you in, um, in the Unsigned and Hype section of the source. Uh, you're getting a lot of love, which... Uh, actually, oh, go ahead. Actually, it was um. He actually got his, his label rated. He got three and a half mics, and oh, we're in the off the radar section. Oh, see, so it's a it's a little so it's a couple a, steps higher. So like. this is where I admittedly say, now I read the article, so I'm not per, I'm not perping, but I'm not up with source like that. I thought it was an unsigned hype, but off the radar is more or less the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much the same general idea. Okay, okay. So uh, how was the response to that been so far? It's crazy, man. It's, uh, you know, because I kind of, I haven't been reading the source for a long time, man, man since, like, it? high school. But you, I actually have come to realize that a lot of people do read it, you know, because it's one of those things where even people from middle school have hit me up. Like, yo, I didn't know you still rap. I was like, you know, they, they, they haven't paid attention. They haven't noticed anything going on. But then you're in the source and, like, people notice, man. I'll, I'll be in a, a club doing a hip-hop show just at random, even at an open mic, and somebody random person will come to me. Did I just see you in the source? And I'm like, that's crazy. So there, it still is a, a magazine that gets out there in a lot of people's hands. I've definitely seen the impact from it. So it's crazy. That's cool. That's cool. Now you got your new project. Why don't you go ahead and talk about that a little bit? The new record is the IV edition. It's my fourth solo record that I've dropped so far. And uh, there's a different producer on each track. I worked with a lot of cats. Uh, Marco Polo and Oh No did uh, two of the singles. I worked with DJ Spinner on it. No from Cunning Linguist. Uh, S1 from Strange Fruit Project, a bunch of different cats. Um, and it's really been, it was really a fun process working on a record. It's been fun promoting it. I'm just kind of uh, enjoying the whole thing. You know, I tried to sit down and just make a record that uh, didn't have any limitations or boundaries. I tried to extend the resources that I had to its fullest capacity and uh, not limit myself. So I feel like I'm breaking new doors as, for myself as an artist and, and just trying to continue pushing forward and progress. Okay, that's cool. Now we got a couple of joints that we're gonna play for you guys off the uh, off IV tonight. We got the IV featuring Rob Swift, and we also got Counterattack. We're gonna run something uh, two joints off of the album tonight. You wanna speak on those real quick? Yeah, man. The IV is uh, the first single that I did with Marco Polo, and uh, Rob Swift did the cuts. And uh, we get, we've had a good response from that so far. We came out with a vinyl single from it, and uh, it's been going around. Counterattack was a B-side. My man Theory Hazard is on that, uh, who represents. He's on the same label as me, Hip Hop is Music. And uh, yeah, Oh No did the beat on the other one. So they're just kind of like some bangers, man, for the college radio show. You know, just uh, some straight up and down, no frills, hip hop music that I made. And uh, yeah, so that's what we've been pushing just to jump off the record. Okay. For those not familiar with your music around the area, um, can you give us kind of like a summary of some of your uh, earlier work they might be a little familiar with? I dropped my first record um, uh, around late 1998, 1999, like my first official solo record called Life First Half the Battle when I was 16. And uh, around that time I was working with Self Titled and uh, No from Cunning Linguist, 6-2 who's, you know, now works with Ninja Tune. Those guys were kind of producing me and I was living in Philadelphia. I mean, I was recording in Philadelphia, living in New Jersey at the time. And uh, so that was kind of like the start. 2004, I put out my second solo record because I took a, some time off and worked on group stuff in between. 2004, I put out a record called Shades of Grey that had uh, a track from Ninth Wonder on it. Rob Swift was on it, a couple other guys. And uh, that was that kind of led to being in Herb Magazine as one of the next 100 and led to some other opportunities that had me touring with James Brown and things like that where I toured with him for 20 concerts before he passed away. So like really like the last three or four years has been where things have been more public and more out in the front. But I mean, I haven't worked a regular job since 1999. So I've just been working on it, you know, putting all my effort and all my energy into the music uh, since I got out of high school. So it's, it's been awesome. So when the, so you said you haven't had a regular job since 99. In those nine years, you've done a lot of traveling. Is it wearing down at all or? Nah, like I, it's funny. I've been married for six years, yo. So I've, I've been married for a while now. and. Uh, I was telling my wife like the other day, cause she's me, my wife, and my daughter. I've got a daughter who's a year and a half. We tour together right now, but there was a, a a moment where I was doing some of the shows by myself, and I was telling her like, man, I could keep doing this. Like it's I I, I still enjoy this. I still really really enjoy it. And uh, 
getting into new areas and, and building up a fan base there and just doing your show, having a chance to share what you do with different people. I, 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 feel, I feel like even though I've been doing it for a while now, I feel like I'm just getting started for where I want to continue to go. So it's, it's, I feel rejuvenated right now. So with your other two crew members, uh, Lightheaded, I'm sure you guys don't often get to rock the stage. So how was it on... Uh like Thursday at Respiration, being able to uh, rock with Othello. For yeah, the well, like the last time we rocked together was in February, and uh, me, Omega, and Othello did some shows opening for Galactic, and that was really dope. They were they were big shows. Uh, Charlie Tuna was performing with the band, and so it, it was awesome. I mean, uh, it kind of takes us back because we spent like two years on the road together, where that was like all we did, and we kind of all tested out our chops there, you know, and then. Just as life went on, we all had to take a time to do our own thing just so that we could develop our own individual styles, personalities, take care of our own personal responsibilities and handle where we were at in life. Because our goal as a group has been that the music would never become a strain on our relationship, you know, because I've seen a lot of groups where they begin not enjoying each other's company as much because the business stuff just starts to get so stressful. So we're try we're not trying to depend on each other to make a living. We're trying to just always enjoy each other's company, remain good friends, and when we get the opportunity to rock together, we treasure it and embrace it. Me and Othello are about to go on the warp tour together, and so we're gonna have like a, a, about a month where we're just chilling together, rocking shows together, and it's definitely going to be a, a time that we're going to make the most of, and, and I know we'll enjoy it. So. And that's important because everybody knows about the Warp Tour. Like even if you're not a rap fan, Warp Tour is one of those crossover type tours that have uh, always been pretty respected within the industry. I guess I'll get Othello's. I'll look on it a little bit later. But how do you? How are you feeling about going on the tour? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's gonna be crazy because we're we're bringing both of our wives and our kids, so we're gonna be just running around like crazy, and it's a opportunity Othello originally had, and uh, he was gonna ride on the bus, but he didn't want to be away from his family for like two months straight. So we figured the first month, let's do it together, bring our families, and then the next month he's gonna ride just uh, with him and a DJ on the bus, and. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big opportunity and at the same time with the Warp Tour, it's like you have to just really make the most of it because there are so many acts and so many bands all on the same fairground. If you're not kind of out promoting yourself and stuff while you're there, it's easy to kind of go unnoticed, you know, and, and be competing with some of the bigger, bigger dogs, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So we kind of intend on going out there and just focusing on a task at hand each day and trying to make the most of the opportunity because there is a lot of people that are going to be walking around on those fairgrounds. We just need to attract them over to our stage, you know, be like, come check out what we're about to do. Okay. Well, we are about to get into some new music from Braille. This month, this next joint is called The IV, featuring Rob Swift, produced by Marco Polo. You know what it is, 88.9 FM, The Impact. This is The Cultural Vibe. Ball at your hoods. This was the one. Right? 